Uh, and a motion to approve the minutes of the April 27th meeting. Recording in progress. Keith Moody. Uh, second. 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 Second Troy. All those, all those uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, updates, um, draft timeline and work plan. Uh, we're always updating that, but go ahead, Tracy. Yep, there's been no significant changes since last week. I did right before this meeting, go in and check on State Board of Education meeting dates and added June 15th as the June date and July 20th as the July date. Note that there is no August meeting. So that really makes July your latest, the, the last possible opportunity to reasonably bring a report to the State Board of Ed if you end up choosing a November vote date. So hold that in mind and we should reach out pretty soon to the State Board of Ed with a request to be on either the June or July agenda if you if you recommend if you think you're going to recommend a uh, a vote of the electorate any questions about that okay uh communication from stakeholders um we received a letter from patricia larose from starksboro and that was shared with uh, all board members so everybody had a chance to look at that um i heard from uh uh the Liz uh Sayer. Sayer, right? S A yeah. Liz Sayer, um, who is working with the student liaison Isabella Courier at MAUSD. And she's interested in, in being involved in our um engagement with uh students. Um we may wanna look at finding uh, someone to help with that, whether it's, you know, the student government, or somebody in the ANW, SD. I, he, yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah, as we figure out the community engagement, if we have people that be helpful. All right. Um, there was no communications with uh, committee members or questions, um, so nothing to add there. Um, I don't think Patrick or Sheila have anything new on the uh, projected impacts of the per people weighted study nothing yet. Yeah. All right. Uh, in terms of office for board members, we worked on that. Uh, we had asked Tracy to check what was required by law, whether it was a three-year term or whether we could have different terms. Tracy checked on that. Yep. And current law for union school districts requires terms to be three years. And the language in H727, which rewrites that chapter, speaks to a third of the seats turning over every year so also will require three-year terms indirectly so that's that there we go all right uh so we have um some draft language for um the and we're looking to preliminary approval for uh the provisions on protecting community schools The draft language is at the bottom of the agenda. Also in the draft articles of agreement beginning on page nine, should be the same in both places. Um, there are a couple of pieces. Um, one was um, we hadn't decided, um, or we hadn't, I think, talked about after, during the three, the four year period, um, the towns whose 
residents go to a school could vote to close it. Um, we didn't talk about um, after that four year, the way this is drafted is that those towns could also vote to close their schools after that four year period. Does it anybody, do you understand what I'm, okay, great. And so we might wanna have discussion on that. And then the other thing was whether or not we also wanted a two thirds majority vote of the school board and we tasked Tracy was putting alternative language. The alternative language is we just take it out. So this has the two thirds school board uh, vote. Um, so those are sort of the, when we were working on the draft language, those were the two pieces. Kevin? Do you want to move this as a motion to discuss or do you want to confirm we discuss? Um, I think we can do it. You know, we discussed it last meeting um and this really took what everybody informally said so i'm happy to entertain a motion i just wanted to highlight those pieces uh, in terms of what we were tasked with doing I'll move it. all right kevin's moving for preliminary approval Second. and keith seconds um discussion <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion to modify. Um, <clears throat> the first paragraph, I would like to add the word equitably between opportunities and for all students. And I would like to delete while increasing cost effectiveness and managing tax break growth. <clears throat> In the second paragraph, Sorry, Kevin, can you um, I, I read was, the full sentence? I was in the first paragraph, not the okay, second. Okay, so the first paragraph, first sentence would remain the same. The second sentence would be an important goal for the formation of the new USD is to enable and enhance the capacity to sustain and grow opportunities equitably for all students, period. Yeah. Or you could say just equitable opportunities. I don't, I have a concern that we're talking money in the, in the, in the leading paragraph. I, I agree with that because it feels like the board's job all the time is to try to be cost effective. That's, and leadership and like, I feel like that's just an unspoken. So we have a most we have a motion to modify. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, Carol, second. Um, discussion on the motion to modify. Go ahead, Troy. Just the sentence, or is are it we yeah. talking about the whole thing, or just that? Uh, um, Kevin, did you want to do them all, or just do this first? I mean, however you want to do it. I've got I got probably three or four points here, so you may want to take them one at a time. Okay. Yeah, yeah let's do that. It'll be line. easier. And Troy had, you had wordsmithed it. a little bit, which I'm fine with. It. But, so grow equi equitable, 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 equitable opportunities for all students. Yeah. Got it. All right. Uh, any other discussion on that? All right. Uh, all those in favor of the modif that modification to the language, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Any abstentions? All right, that modification carries. Uh, Kevin, you had some other right, changes. So Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. So the next paragraph, <clears throat> yeah. I, I would propose can, that we yeah, delete. Do that. Um, the phrase in local school based decision making in the fourth line and then as well strengthen small community schools i propose to delete small both in that paragraph and the next paragraph where it's just to protect small elementary schools i think i'm i'm concerned that um to, to have local school-based decision making could be construed as um they will be 
um, operating totally independent from any sort of central office coordination. That's why I'm proposing to strike that. And I think that the term small elementary school is ambiguous and um, it could even be considered discriminatory mm -hmm. if you're favoring the small as opposed to any other school. And I have a second for that modification. Second, Sarah. Second, Sarah. Discussion? Troy? So in that same paragraph, <laughs> the same reason you want to take out cost effectiveness on the first one, I, I would love to take out cost effective mindset just because I've already heard three people who are not on this board pass judgment on that term. Um, and I don't know if it's needed. I, I think we could just say the view of USD is to enact policies. So let me do them one at a oh, okay. time. So we have a second on Kevin's motion to change language in the second paragraph. Is there any discussion on that? All those in favor of that, aye. 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 Any opposed? Any discussion? I mean, sorry, any abstentions? <laughs> All right, Troy, go ahead with um, so, your- So my thought was to, in that same sentence, take out cost-effective mindset. All right. Any just uh, a second on that? A second. Uh, second, Carol. Any discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Uh, Kevin, I think you had some other ones. Yeah. So maybe I should start with a question. Underneath item two, after four years. Um, item A underneath that says a quorum of the board, two thirds majority quorum of the board. I'm construing that to mean that if you have a meeting, you have a quorum that shows up that meeting of two thirds of those people as opposed to the full board. Right. Which I would I would strike that and make it a two thirds majority of the board. Okay. There's a second on that. Uh, any discussion? So part of the reason we use quorum of the board is that con of concern that um, it could be a really divisive issue and um, board members could just decide not to show up and then you could never have a vote on it. So that was the thought behind it. Is that, again, not ever being on a school board? Does that happen? Like, has that happened in the past? Is the precedent for that? Well, if you say the whole school board, then even if just one doesn't show up. Well, where were my mind when it was? So currently, the MASD board has a vacancy. Okay. So, so if there's a vacancy and it's the full board, what then it changes the percentage of votes? So typically, it is a quorum of the board when you vote on anything anyway, right? You, if you, you have, have a quorum. Without a quorum, you can't have a vote, right? So if you have a quorum, then you vote with, you know, it would have to be warned and on the agenda. And the 15 member board, that would be seven? Eight, 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 ten. Ten, that'd be 10, ten. 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 Oh, eight would have to show up for a quorum. Eight would have to show up for a quorum. And as this reads, two thirds of the eight would have to vote. Well, yeah. we have weighted voting, so let's yeah. 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 Federal government, right? You just don't show up for votes, but I don't know what the how we could write in protocols or you know if somebody willingly doesn't attend two or three meetings, you know, like if this was a special meeting and and you can be zoomed in, like it gets harder and harder not to attend the meeting, right? Yeah, like, I mean um, you can attend. Well, I mean obviously some things might happen yeah. where you couldn't attend. Um, Erica. Um, from from my point of view, I feel like this is not something that we should really get bogged down in because this is 
only a first step. I think the board is not closing the school. It has right. to go to the vote of yeah. everybody anyway. So uh, I'm happy with the forum language. I feel like that is workable. And, you know, it's, it's not up to, we want it to not be up to the board. So it's important that the actual vote is all the people. But, uh, I don't know. I'm thinking on just doing the math. I mean, it, it takes what eight for a quorum? Seven? Well, it's weighted voting. So, mm -hmm. so, um, so then, like, you could, you could, huh? you could if, if, if the minimum of a quorum showed up and two thirds of those voted it, it could be, it could really only be a third of the actual. Not quite. Oh, even less with the weighted voting or more. I don't know. I feel like if people are feeling that ill about it, that they're going to dismiss the meeting specifically, not the vote, and maybe it's not. Maybe that's not something that should, should pass. Or they should vote now. Right. That's, right. It's, 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 <laughs> I think that's what I'm going to That's the forum language in there. It encourages people to show up. Yeah. And so then there will be a vote and they can have a voice in it instead of encouraging people to just <clears> stay away or <throat> there doesn't have to be a vote. Yeah. yeah, you're losing your voice. You're losing your voice. You don't show up. So I'll retract that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's no, fine. I, I mean, I'm on another board, and it's just, and you, you still have to have a quorum, but the vote is of the total board. Where we got a school there. Anyway, so, so, Kevin, how does that happen? So, you have a quorum, and then how do you have a vote of the entire board? If so in, in order to pass, you have to have, so it's a nine member board. So for it to pass simple, you have to have five people vote. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. that's a whole other. So I, I mean, I was a little confused there and, and it makes sense given the point that you brought up. So, and this is the last thing. Well, we, let's, we need to vote on this. Oh, so. did we have a motion now? Or was it? Was he was no, there was no second. Oh, <laughs> I started okay, with sorry. He did with the question. All right. Um, did you have? I've got one more. Okay. And, and that's go ahead. That may be good or bad. I don't know. <laughs> so in the last paragraph, it goes uh, second line directors of the new new UUSD in partnership with. I'd like to strike a partnership and substitute with and put from. I say that again. So the second line says directors of the new UUSD in partnership with faculty staff administration. I would I would propose make a motion to change that to directors of the new UUSD with input from faculty staff and administration. Right. My rationale is I that partnership construes that um, and I hate to say this, but partnership construes that you have to have to do what is discussed with that. They're group. equal partners and they're not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it takes it could affect the way the board operates as opposed to looking for input and value that in, in input. Okay, a second for that motion? Mary seconds that. Um, any discussion? All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Uh, anyone else have any? Uh, Changes, motions, suggestions, any other? Fair. Do we want to be as specific with the words combine, or do we want to actually do something that's a little more option based? What paragraph? In the last paragraph where it says it's the intent to combine, what about to go either reconfigure or to um, expand? opportunities for i don't know just finding a way to add in the purpose there not the, the either the so panic yeah. thought like this is our goal i don't know i don't it, it might not end up being like yeah the best way to combine resources in two years like it might be Oh, actually, we want to have one high school and two middle schools, or we want to have 
keep them separate for a while, but we're going to do this kind of thing. Like, we don't really know. And I just worry that that's too okay. limiting. Oops, sorry. Yeah, yeah what's I, the words I there? I just realized that's, fine, that's also confusing because yeah. I, I read that as combining the middle and high schools into one, one giant school. So <laughs> it would definitely not be yeah, grade that. six to 12. But, but yeah, right, exactly. So I would. I would say, you know, yeah, maybe reconfigure or something. Um, Instead of expanding grades, what about like expanding um, opportunities. opportunities? Or maximizing. Maxim or, or, I mean, do we need this language in the article? Well, what if combined became operate? Because that is what we're asking the board to do is to operate a middle and high school. Or to operate. We, yeah, we want to give the uh, board of, the new board of directors the maximum flexibility in merging. Yeah. Yeah. And this Combined is a statement of intent. So I they still have flexibility, but I do think we want to capture what what the intent is. <laughs> Well, like the intent is to expand opportunities at the middle and high school level. So I would like to see opportunity, like something to do with the positives that will come from combining middle and high school level in year two as far as the language is concerned. Because just telling people we're going to combine grades is not as positive as it could be. Um, okay. So maybe Chase, like we're not have... going to only operate one or two or whatever number of campuses before or campus structure would not change in the first until there's been two years of operation. Any potential? I feel like that's another directive though. How about you just keep it wide open and just yeah. operate? Yeah. Yeah, just, yeah. To operate yeah. middle and high schools and expand yeah. opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. To expand opportunities at the middle and high school. Yeah, yeah. Growing yeah. 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 We want to leave for the board of directors. Yeah. I think the challenge that this committee faces is you have to write language that could fit in any possible context in the future. I think what we've experienced is, you know, language that was written in our articles of agreement in the context at the time made perfect sense. And that context now is very different. And so people are applying a current context to the language and using that to advance their ideas and thoughts. And if we can avoid that for the next group, that would be wonderful. <laughs> so what, what I'm hearing is maybe ending um deleting all the all the section from and expand grade served delete all of that and just um it's the intent of the anwsd mausd merger study committee to enable the board of directors of the new uusd with the input from all of those groups to expand opportunities at the middle and high school levels period this is best. So um, I'd entertain a motion. So moved. And okay, wait. go ahead. I have a question. Right. Just because of what you just said. Is this a forever thing for the new board, or is this just what we're saying to the board? Because the way you just said that, when I hear the word expand, if there's ever something that's going to be taken away. Somebody's going to say that is not expanding opportunity. <laughs> it's against the articles of agreement. Because it says it right here that your your mission is to expand yeah. opportunity, and you're cutting this course. <laughs> what are we stepping on to allow the possibility of reconfiguring town service? I just love the model. Just to maximize opportunity. <laughs> It doesn't seem funding to me. It's just that was my question. Is yeah, this something I, that the new board is going to have to adhere to? Right. They're going to they're gonna have to. Yep. Grab they'll be their it. reference. There'll be people saying that their trust has been just 
the trade. Uh, yeah. Because expand scares me because there's no such thing as expansion forever. No. Mm -hmm. Do you want to sustain and expand or? Like no. Oh, okay. I kind of like maximize because that just deals with what you can deal with. Yeah. Do the best with what you're All right. Maximize. Maximize opportunities. Yeah. 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 And that could be we got to take a little bit from this to give to this, mm -hmm. even out this. Yeah. So was the point of this sentence, this paragraph though, about the fact that the the high school would remain untouched for two years? Is that our intent, or is that we okay. care about the two years part? I put it in there to honor your discussion yeah. about the importance of a union creating the opportunities for strategies to be implemented that accomplish what you want to accomplish at the middle and high school best. levels. But also to be clear that it's a light switch is not going off in year one. But really, the biggest piece of it was to convey what you discussed last time which was the importance of communicating to the community that we really need to work together at the middle and high school levels because of the declining enrollment, uh, because we want to sustain opportunities for our students and grow and, and do good things. So that's why it was there, but it doesn't have to be there. I would remind you that there's sprinkled throughout this also the articles, this language that, that says that the new board, let's see if I can find one. After the first year, it wouldn't even have to say that the board of school directors shall make all, all subsequent decisions relative to the operation of the new district consistent with state and federal laws and these articles of agreement. That's in there a couple places. Two. I do think that the two years also makes sense um, just because transitioning from, you know, being about Abe and Virgins and pushing the two together and deciding how that's going to be divided and swished together. Like that takes a lot of work and effort in regards to curriculum and movement of faculty and staff and all of those moving parts is going to take a, a bit of work and a bit of effort. So I think the people involved in that movement, um, faculty, staff, students, families are going to need that time to get their heads wrapped around that movement. So I think maybe having that two years there might be that little buffer of people not going insane about that quick, like, oh my gosh, this is gonna happen right here, right now. Um, so I, I do think that two year window might just alleviate some nerves. Yeah, yeah like massive campus alterations, I don't know, wouldn't happen for two years, right? I think there it needs to provide a little bit of that breathing room. Also, that's somewhere else in the articles too. Erica, so the way it reads now, I I was assuming there was just one year because it says beginning no sooner than the second year of the commencement of operations. So, but everybody's been talking about two years. So, did we want to change to two years? One question. Um, and then, I yeah, I kind of I like Troy's language of operate, and also Dustin's idea of like allowing for the possibility of something to happen, like what we want to happen. If we're just saying our intent, um, but I don't know that might you know be taken as a directive if it's in there if it's written down I don't know but I did want to just clarify about the one year or two year difference if I remember correctly what you were saying about the discussion the other big reason is that we separated it mostly for the elementary school part so that we could have really specific language about the elementary schools mm -hmm. and we didn't actually get to talking too much about terms for the other part, other than the fact that we know you have to run a high school or middle school. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, after that, it just becomes the nitty gritty. 
Erica. Can we uh, vote on the part under supporting and protecting community schools and table the middle and high school language? And come back to that if we thought about it and maybe rewritten the proposal. It seems like we're doing a lot of of trying to write it. Editing it on the fly. I don't know. Yeah. So I guess one part is though we need to have clarity if you know we can go back and write something that we need clarity on what the committee wants in that so um you know we need to discuss that further to understand that that was kind of my idea like can we just discuss this without having to feel like we have to get all the words perfectly and vote on it today whereas i do feel like the other part might be ready However, you guys want to proceed. Is it a two part vote? I think we should come up. Yeah. Right. I think we should work on it because we're, we're getting down to the new. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, you know, part of why we we're what we were trying to draft was it seemed like there's urgency for the high school and middle school because of declining enrollment and that. Um, you know, we wanted to, and both from the feedback we got from the community and in our discussions, our emphasis has been on the reason we want to do this is because we want kids to have opportunities that they might not have if we don't do this because of declining enrollment. So that's what we we're trying to convey through that. And I, I think those are all accurate in terms of what we've you know, as a board, we, or as a committee, what our thoughts are about that. But I think, go ahead, it, could be, I think it could help a lot if somebody starts scribing yeah. the discussion. I'm I not, think Tracy is doing up that. Uh, I'm trying. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Wait, I was going to say, Troy, can you first? Pete, what you said on the back of that. So I think I have something. Oh, well, he's writing away. I, I think I'm good until this very last part. So I think you can keep, so it is the intent of the current, uh, of the intent of this committee to enable the board of directors of the new USD with input from faculty, staff, administration, students, families in the new UUSD community, the voters, to operate middle and high schools that maximize educational opportunities for all students of the district, or I, I'm stuck with the last little part, because I don't know what we want to do with the second year. Um, I think it's two sentences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. To maximize operate educational opportunities. For all students. For all students of the district. Uh huh. And then maybe a sentence that's um, any changes in school configuration will begin no sooner than the second year of the commencement of operations. Or third. Year. Or third. Okay. So so let's get clarity. Let's do that second piece after. Okay. So this first piece. Um, are we ready to move that language forward? Can you say it one more time. It is. <laughs> so it is the intent of the this board, or this this study committee. Sorry, this study committee <coughs> enable the new board, the board of directors of the new USD, uh, with input from faculty, staff, administration, students, families, and the new USD community to operate middle and high school. That will maximize educational opportunities for all. Or just for all. Three. Oh yeah. For all. Got it. Got it. Maximize middle and high school opportunities. No. Just opportunities for just all. Opportunities for yeah. All. To we're going to operate middle and high schools. We don't know what the configuration is long term, but we know we got to operate them. And we want them to maximize educational opportunities for everyone. Uh, 
Go ahead, Keith. Um, or by saying operate middle and high schools, or are we automatically implying multiple of both? The copy editor and he says that it does say that. Mm -hmm. What should we say? Wait, I mean, why not put a little? You could put a little a and or yeah, a in S. front of middle and high schools, and then put the S in schools in parentheses as well. I, I, <laughs> I fear that makes it look. Oh yeah. What about <laughs> to operate schools at the middle and high school level? Then it doesn't specify how many. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> that will not provide an opportunity. No. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, you know, high school level. That's yeah, I got it. it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so that does make that does make clear that there are more than one school. Yeah, we have to. Perhaps that is true. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, will that be true in twenty years? Well, we discussed well, that if well, they well, were to be combined, one would operate, one would operate. Feel like that covers oh to operate that. school yeah it's highly unlikely you're going to merge middle and high schools just because of the definition of school for state reporting and accountability practices doesn't mean you can't have different schools in the same building exactly right? so this that's the, i don't know if you guys have the agenda i've changed She's it on, updating it updating it so here's what i have it is the intent of the AMWSD MAUSD merger study committee to enable the board of directors of the new US UUSD, comma, with input from faculty, staff, the administration, students, families, and the new UUSD community to operate schools. I have the S in print in uh, yeah, parentheses. Um, at the middle and high school level, that will maximize opportunities for all educational opportunities. Educational opportunities, yes. perfect. Is that language um, that we want to? Are we ready to move on that? Go ahead, Keith. Yeah, my, it's good to have a word sniffer. Can we remove the extra space? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I, uh, yeah, got it. Already got it. Sorry. What? This space yeah, way man. up here. Uh, uh, consider it already corrected. <laughs> okay, so actually, yeah. do we want yeah, to? And then we'll do deal with the number of years. Um, so we're just doing oh, so piece at a time. We did correct that. Um, so this middle high school language, can is we ready for a motion on that? Troy Dunn already has a motion for this because he started with his wordsmithing. Troy, are you good to move this? I am very good. Uh, second. So, sorry, UUSD, is there a difference between a unified union SD and just an SD? Or could it, could it just be USD? Remember that this is just a working definition. And I'm hoping that as part of your community engagement, you will narrow down an appropriate name. That's part one, a name that you like. And part two, not an appropriate name, a name that you like. And part two is I've already started getting feedback from the AOE. And um, one of the things that they say is this is just going to be a school district. So we can take out all the, yeah. we can make it much, much fewer words. Much prettier name. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. I, I just have one other thing. It says maximize educational opportunities. Is it just educational opportunities or should we leave? Because I also am thinking like sporting opportunities yeah. and other like non-academic opportunities that are also part of a school and their functions. Like we already collaborate with sports across Mount Abe and Virgin. So I'm almost wondering Maybe if we food. Just... And food, yeah. I forgot that, key piece. <laughs> I would say that all of those things are educational. But I do think that they are. I just wanted to make sure but, that because but up I above do, we but, did- But we could, yeah. Up above we said like, 
promote resources opportunities for all students for the elementary school. So I just was looking below and saw educational opportunities. I'm nope. totally fine with leaving it educational because I do believe that's that educational too, but I'm just pardon. pointing that out. Yeah, no, I think it's a good point. Um, this is an educational institution and all those things are part of it. I do agree, but I just, yeah, since we're here making more choices. <laughs> I'm good with leaving it. <laughs> Everybody good with leaving it, or do we want to expand on that? We have, so we don't have it in the very first paragraph. Okay. That's your point. Well, right. I was just seeing, like, you know, how, but it's fine. I'm good with leaving. You could construe the first paragraph to be. Global. Yes. Do, do you want to say right. we'll maximize equitable educational yes, opportunities? I, I, pretend I just didn't say that. We'll just go back. Leave it. Hey, we'll leave it there. Right. I, like um, I do like. Yes. Do you want to? We have a motion. Trying to grow everything. Yeah. Right. All right. Uh, all right. Motion from Troy Dragon. Second. 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 Any discussion? So my thought, do we want to say equitable educational opportunities for all? Or are we good? Um, Less is more. Yep, yeah, we're good. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, all those in favor of the uh, language proposed, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. Um, let's have a discussion about the time period. I just need to say in a positive way. Feel like, like we want to make as many good changes as we can as fast as possible, but we don't want to make anything that's going to throw us into a dizzy too quick. How do we write that? Ask a question. Troy, go ahead. So I 100% know exactly what you're talking about. And I, and I think about like, how leadership would want to think about this, whoever's leading the ship and, and their task. And I think about our role as we're just um, sort of researching, trying to get a bunch of input and feedback, trying to think about all the possibilities and trying to arm the future board if this all gets voted in with the ability to make the best possible decisions, clearly with the help of their administrative leadership teams because the people on the board are not professional educators and administrators. So I think about how do we make, we create a language in that sentence or two that is um, uh, a recommend, can it be a recommendation? Something that's not handcuffing, if there's something that really needs to happen after year one, that they're like, okay, it's in the best interest of everybody that we do this right now after year one, because we now can see the ability and that it should happen, that I don't want to write language that somebody would say, nope, can't do it until year three. Yeah, I but, think, you know what I, mean? I think the time period is less of an issue at, than people, kind of what I heard is people want to know like what's going to happen next year, right? And even if it was that, they were going to combine, like they want to just know. Um, and, and so I think as long as people have, you know, know what's going to happen, um, then that, you know, have a year notice, that seems like, I mean, they're not, nobody's going to be able to do a change until after the first year of operation anyway. I think part of oh, sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. I that. part of the the point of doing some of this language is also a little bit of a, a PR and a safety net. And I think that's what the we're not we're, they're not gonna rush into a total campus shift right. in one year. Like it's not likely to happen and Hey, right, where's my kid going to what building is my kid going to school? What, what, what next year? Um, I think Dustin. Um, I was just thinking, well, I, I wonder if that 
if, if in this article is, is the appropriate place to put that. I, I remember somebody came, I think it was Rob Backlund. It's, there's somebody who attended a, a guest that brought up the really felt that our committee needs to like put out what our vision is. Um, I think that's what he was getting at. Like what, like, yeah. and what's this gonna look like a year from now? So what, what is our vision for what the schools look like in the community and get that out? So maybe there's a separate document, statement, yeah. press release that we create that. after this that gets gets to that. But yeah. in, this is what governs. Yeah. yeah, this is what governs. There is another provision in here that speaks to this issue of in the article that speaks to the issue of right now it's written for one year. Yeah. And so we don't need to do this here. We can just go back to that article and decide if we want to revise that article. Uh, Kevin. But to Sarah's point, it's, it comes down to PR and and, and making people feel comfortable and for the few words it takes to put it in here as a reminder, even though you're not invoking anything new. And, I, and from the conversation I'm hearing is, you know, at first it was like, oh, let's, let's put it out to three years, but I'm not so sure of the original language we had that said before the second year is whatever it meant, which effectively means one year. Mm -hmm. Right, um, right probably has a lot of value just to stick back in. Um, Ed, sorry, um, you had something. Ed. All right, see, I had something already drafted, but it, what you're saying is that the way it's written right now could be interpreted as two years? No, I think we were going to change it to three years because the discussion was two years and that became right. I, I proposed. Uh, any reconfiguration shall commence on or after the beginning of the third year of the, of the beginning of the operation of the new district. Does that um, provide the time uh, timeline that's appropriate given the demographics and the issues? That was the piece that I was thinking about is truly speaking. So there's in an ideal state without any external pressures beyond what we can see right now, over two or three years to merge governance and then sort of merge leadership and then merge schools is sort of the evolution of the transition that I think makes sense. However, with so many big things in flux right now to pigeonhole yourself and to Everyone, to Troy's point, everyone sees this is the best thing to do. Like we're not, we're not merging school districts because we thought it'd be a fun exercise, right? This is in response to a crisis that we see on the horizon. So, so much. If, 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 if we've done the work to merge and we see the low hanging fruit that we'd love to take advantage of, but we can't because this language prohibits it, that would be really unfortunate. So. <laughs> Up to that point, there are a lot of um, parts left to cut out of like the AMWSD budget, for example. Uh, we've done a lot of heavy lifting in the last few years. Uh, there's not much less left other than programming. So you're really talking about the longer we wait, uh, the more opportunities uh, the students are losing in their schools. It, it would really, I think, start to dramatically impact student experience. Yeah. Um, Erica? Yeah, I think it's important that if we are setting some kind of timeline, like this is not going to happen until at least the second year or at least the third year, then we have to be very clear about what it is right. that's not going to happen. Because a lot of things can happen short of putting people in the same building. Um, so I, I, I really think that this language from the original one, not not the combining part, but the no sooner than the second year commencement of operations. I, I think that's a good idea because it doesn't force them to change anything after the first year, but it leaves it open and it's reassuring that, okay, for the first year, you're going to know where your kids are going to be in school. I'm going to get Sarah. Oh, I was going to say also. You really have no idea if all of a sudden they're like, we're actually going to phase this in, like with the youngest 
two grades like within the first year and then and then that trickles its way up as they go like we like it might start with not everyone it might start with one small group and you don't even you, I think the second year start of the second year makes the most sense I don't think we should go to the third year I guess that's what I want to say out loud because you could be not really affecting everyone just maybe one population Carol well, I think we need to incorporate a word like infrastructure, combined infrastructure, um, because I would love to see the combined classes and opportunities as soon as the merger goes through. I want to expand languages. I want to expand opportunities, um, but it's the, the school themselves that people are worried about. Um, so being very clear about that. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, did you have something? Just to, technically wanted to remind you that Article 5, which has a statutory reference, speaks to the first year of operations and empowers the committee to kind of set those guardrails for the first year. And so you have addressed provisions around staffing assignments, school of attendance, which was optional in 14, contracts, transportation, all of those things are already, are also in there in a one year time frame, as is allowed in 706. So this paragraph we're talking about deal only with configurations of the middle and high school. Mm -hmm. It's not even well configurations. Configuration. Maybe we just leave it out because we've already got it someplace else. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, keep it simple. And then it's part of our PR. I, yeah, it, that's the problem. So I had a discussion this afternoon, as a matter of fact, oh, um, with somebody that was talking to somebody else. So you, <laughs> and it's like, where do the savings come from? It's like, well, you're going to combine central office for a start, starter. So you have two central offices going into one. Well, where do the savings come from? So some of this, some of this stuff, it, you, 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 if you err, just as long as you don't start tripping yourself up, if you err on being overly explicit, it may seem that way to us, but to somebody else, it might not be. I, I agree with Sarah that it, for one sentence, it, it, it might, you know, um, well, save a what, lot of hurt from a lot of people, for some people. I really just add to that point a little bit that I think is really important. Um, what you're getting at is the savings comes from people, and that's the reality. And I think what's important for people to recognize is, in particular, the general community who's not swimming in this all the time, Merger or no merger, each of our districts needs to find savings. And those savings will come from people. The merger, savings still comes from people because people may react to, we're gonna have fewer people if we merge and assume if we don't merge, that means we don't have fewer people, which isn't necessarily true. The difference is what do we have left after the reduction of people in the merger versus no merger scenario? And I think the way we, Kind of spin that narrative is really important as we talk about the realities going forward and that the savings will result will come from fewer people and isn't it true that it's not truly savings as it is a decrease in the rate of cost yes <laughs> slowing the bleeding you're not yeah. gonna, you're not taxes yeah. aren't going to go down no. they're just not going to go up as fast yeah. as they would otherwise they could go down for a period of time if we made big sweeping changes and save $5 million in operating costs, you might see a reduction in your taxes. And they would tick back up over time and catch up and go past again, but depends right. on how it's really but, material. But that PR is making sure people understand that because a lot of people are really upset about the merging of mm -hmm. um, the districts before because their taxes are mm -hmm. higher than they were, um, even though it's five years later. Um, so My experience is it's, it's been really hard to get people to compare future A to future B. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to compare current to future right. A or current to future B. Yeah. I mean, the, the last merger didn't change anything except governance, governance in our districts because we didn't merge with anybody else. We already were our five towns and your five towns and Whereas in districts that did what we're doing now, they did have savings. 
Well, we did get some kickback yeah. from the state, right? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that was, no, yeah. Is your, is your point that you think people want language that says we're not going to make a drastic change within a year or two, or they want uh, they want the not us like I'll stop saying us it's not us the the board the new board and governance and leadership to not make any significant changes in the first year or two, or are they more like we want to see changes if we're going to do this that are going to save me pennies. So the, the, the whole mystery to, to a lot of, not a lot of people, but to different people is how, how's this going to save money or more precisely co avoid costs and they're not connecting the dots yet. So, and, and my, my only point was, is just to stick at that sentence in here about you're not, even though it's somewhere else and you won't, I don't believe we'll trip over our feet by putting it there. It will just, anybody that's got a question, oh yeah, it's right there. They don't have to go back and understand what article five was or what's the was. sentence, Kevin? Well, whatever the one we took out and we're talking about. Uh. <laughs> but there's, there's not necessarily and there's, there's there's misinformation and there's not a lot of correlation to what is actually happening. But I just come back to what was said right here about how close we are as a large community on both sides of Route 7 to losing programs. Like, you know, we're at the bone. <laughs> and I don't think anybody wants to see two or three years. I mean, if you've got somebody who's a freshman or sophomore in high school, you want those changes to happen as quickly as possible so that your student isn't in the two-year limbo zone where, wow, wish we could have fixed that a year ago. I, I don't know. I just, I... I don't want to handcuff the future board and future leadership of the school district from making the best possible decision for all of the students. But I guess my thought, my my assumption talking about this is we'd limit it to one year, which is sort of somewhere else. Great, that's a nice question. Okay, it's no sooner than the second so let me ask you this. I'm just throwing out a hypothetical. Okay? Because I this is I'm just thinking to myself. So we're not going to change the buildings, we'll say in the first year. We got a blue and a maroon <laughs> building, and we got whatever we got. But we have a AP social studies teacher at Mount Abe who only has two sections because that's all you got for kids. But there's an opportunity for that teacher because now we're in a unified district and we're all the same teaching staff to teach over here and teach two sections, you could, could that happen even though, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wanna be able to make sure that kids that aren't gonna happen. lose out on opportunity because we waited two more years and you had to cut three teachers on this side. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We went to the language. And in a handcuff, they said, nope, you can't do that. That's not within the first two years. I just, I want the ability to make the best decisions to happen because it is about saving pennies a little bit, but it's also about providing the best educational opportunities with the pennies we have and the pennies we're spending. And I think 5B speaks to that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, in blank, all staff will be assigned to the sites and assignments that would have been assigned in an academic year, provided, however, that the new UUSD and staff members may agree to modifications or reassignment based on individual staff and school district circumstances and needs. So that's already taken care of. Yeah. So it sort of says like none of the big major structural changes mm -hmm. are going to happen. But we can do one, some, some of those pockets of opportunities that we can take advantage of as long as everyone agrees to it. So should we have another sentence here or do we, we one option is we could just leave it how we have it. If we wanted to put in something about we could say, you know, our intent is the students continue to attend the school that they would have attended in the first year of a merger for the first year at least.
Well, that's the law anyway. That's what we already said. Right. So we're just restating right. it. We're just putting it for PR reasons so that people will see it connected to the way we're thinking about the elementary school. But we're also thinking about it. Uh, um. <laughs> I think it's that possible to have the move. If we voted on this this year, it would become operational to have the, <laughs> the high school merged for the following school year. Yeah. Impossible. Yeah. A reading specialist, like you know, the other wants to. But that's an adult. So we have that yes. already in that German that other article. That's just what I want to protect. I want to protect yeah. what we can do to enhance. So we're starting to uh, get beyond the time, in fact, uh, yeah, time frame for this. Um, do we want to just go what with what we have and take it to the community and then decide if we want to add something when we go through that process? Or does someone have some language they want to propose? Hmm. Does anyone have any language they want to pro propose? Okay. Then go ahead, Kevin. Um, so with the so the, in the original option two. There was some language in there that um, talked to a town had the, the district allowing a town to separate based on being a town. There's some confusion or some belief, or maybe it's actuality, that by merging these two districts together, a town will lose its ability to exit through a state approved process. And you're, is that? Fair or not? No, I think chapter the rewrite of chapter 11, which should be finalized in the next couple of weeks, will not only clarify that pathway, well, clarify and solidify that opportunity in a way that current law does not clearly okay. state. So that will not be an issue. It'll, it'll, yeah. Yeah, so that'll be good information to have as we go into the community. All right. So, um, so we're done. I forget. Do we have a motion on this language already? Should we have a motion just to delete that last part? Yes. To clarify that that's what you want. So delete everything and expand grades served at the middle level beginning no sooner than the second year of the commencement of operations. Just delete all that. We so did. Uh, second. Second. Carol. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Any abstention? Okay. And Glory, we did approve the other language. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh. Uh, all right. So the next piece is the articles, dates of um, dates of vote, date of commencement of operations. You had talked about um, a November 1st, 2022 date of vote and July 1, 2023 commencement of operations. And I got a thumbs up to put it in there. And then a committee member asked a question about whether that was the right timeline or not. So I didn't insert the dates and wanted to take an opportunity to <laughs> confirm your preferences and and allow any discussion or, or new thoughts around dates what articles is this? it is several articles it would be um you know we've got blanks for dates everywhere but it would be let's see date of vote article 11. there you go article 11 date, date of vote 
Article 12 is date of commencement of operations, and then it would impact. So it's really 11 and 12, and then I'd fill in the blanks everywhere else. Okay. Of course, you can thank me for bringing that up. And, and I, <laughs> as, as I work through my thoughts to the co chairs and Tracy, I think I came to a conclusion, but. Um, and I, I, and I believe that we should have those original dates. The, the sticky points are, we have two towns on the MAUSD side of the house that, in my opinion, weren't in favor of a merger all through the public engagement sessions. And they, at best, haven't changed that or maybe even gotten um, stronger against that, if you will. So with that understanding or belief, and it could it compromise at least the MAUSD side um, this fall to not prevail as a merger if we go ahead and do a merger. So that means the vote doesn't approve. The, okay. The, 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 the follow on is, is this issue doesn't go away. So do you do you reconvene another merger study committee? If you do, when do you do it? Wait until those two towns go through their due process and figure out if they are um, <clears throat> going to exit or not. And if they exit, then the changes the, the, the status of that vote on that particular side of the house. Um, and and if it doesn't, you're 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 at the second time asking the electorate to vote on the issue. And and it's like each time you ask the electorate to vote, they get a little bit more cranky about why you're asking me again too. So without a crisp understanding of where we're at, and what the next step would be if A happens or B happens. I, I think I, I was, I'm, when I wrote that, I was concerned that we weren't going into this thing eyes wide open, understanding those risks. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I don't want, I, cer I certainly don't want to drag it out. And, I, and at the end of the whole thing, I'm like, well, you know, we got to do this thing this fall, but there's some pretty significant risks with doing that. And, and then what's the fallback and, and how you deal with whatever A would be or B would be. And that's what I Fair. Fair. So if it actually occurred, then while those towns may have left one district, are they automatically in this district? So it's a timing thing. If if right. if they are out of the district, if that has been completed, but it won't have right. So, so their process is actually neither will not will have avoided by because now if we merged and this was suddenly operational, then now they have to go through the process to get out of the new, new district. district. Just um, a different way of looking at it because they did. But right, it would be the district vote and not the particular town. I'm just curious if there's a way for those towns to say we're not going to vote on this and therefore we don't have to go through this process again. Is that legal? Yeah, Erica. Um, I might be completely off base, but is, is there not a way to spin this to say? Look, we're, we're putting this in that we're not going to close any schools. So if you vote for the merger, then you know you're not going to close the school. And so you don't need to leave. And you can have all the benefits of being part of a district. Um, I don't know. That, that's a, a thought. Peace. And then also, as Tracy's saying, the state is clarifying that path to leave. And these schools have some guarantee that for X number of years, their school is open. By the time in the future, if they decided they did want to withdraw, 
they would have, in theory, a, a cleaner path to do that. I mean, we yeah. can somehow work this into our communications with. Uh, this is a uh, history. We went through something similar in Act 46 merger. And the upshot was a uh, descending point of view attached to the to the merger document, the uh, articles. All right. Um, and put to the vote and, and passed. Yeah. Um, so if this goes to vote in November, it's just a majority vote of all the towns. Each town doesn't have to ratify district it. By district by district. <laughs> so both districts have a right. Yeah. It's not one town no. can't hold it up to five towns. Right. So if if the five towns get more people to say yes, then you're on right. each side. And that's what happened with Act 46. Yeah. Was Act 46 voted by towns? Yes. Yeah. Each town had to say yes. Mm -hmm. And what so was, was do we call what the percentages were for Lincoln and Starksboro? Lincoln passed by 12 votes and Starksboro passed by 25. They just, so they both, they both passed. <laughs> they had to pass. Otherwise, they wouldn't be part of yeah. Otherwise, they wouldn't have heard one town yeah. saying no meant no yeah, merger. Right. Oh, yeah. How many times um, did you go? So, for? what if we, um, you know, maybe, Tracy, I, I don't know, you know, Lincoln's further along in their process. And so we sort of need some um advice from Time for legal advice yeah legal or department of ed in long terms long of that state, you know? um chapter 11 the the statutory rewrites um have a section or there's a second bill that addresses lincoln lincoln and other districts that are in the process of withdrawing and to be honest it was so complicated i was waiting until we got closer before i tried to understand which sections applied to which towns or which processes but um and and we're at that point but the the rewrite of the law is intended to address um not starksboro uh, Lincoln and Ripton and Stowe. Why would towns Stowe. be treated differently in the state? Uh, depending on where they were in the in the existing legal uh, process, the statute, the rewrite of the statute is mm -hmm. trying to address those differences. And so, honestly, I suspect that Starksboro would. Um, there's a possibility yeah. that they'd have to start over anyway. So, my thought, understanding that that this could take a while, is I don't the taxpayer and voter and um, community member in me says like we can't hold up the progress of everybody in all of these towns for a movement like i get the movement i understand the unit the movement i respect everything that they're saying i get it but the rest of us have to do business like um i agree i i think I think the no number one, I think the original date should be kept. And I think or no, if it fails, there's the good rationale to re reconvene a merger study committee once things are settled in those two towns. Yeah. And go ahead, Chair. No. Yeah. All right. So um, I, oh, go ahead, Erica. I have in here that I'm looking at November 8th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yep. I believe you. Okay. Yeah. Whatever it is. Okay. I was thinking November 1st was the first Tuesday, but maybe it's the 8th. So if we get any other information um, in terms of this statutory process relative to Lincoln and or Starksboro, then we can revisit this. And then if something else changes um, between now and then, we can also revisit the dates. But We'll keep the dates as they are for now. Can I clarify sure. the union date? So if we vote and it was a vote yes, is this like it's much easier to create a union marriage than it is to get divorced? So that our time frame, our transitional window is like, is it immediate? Or is it actually not start until 
June or July, or does it start in March? Like, how does it? Somewhere in the county they're getting divorced is easier. Yeah. Than <laughs> than <laughs> <laughs> I, I was distracted by action day. Day. <laughs> Fair enough. But the timeline seems to be like so they made ribs in delay, and there seems like it's never ended. Then, and yeah. Then, and now it's actually even worse. It's more awkward. A lot of that's the election cycle. And the cost of holding special elections. Oh, okay. They yeah. yeah. made them go back to the table. We need to talk about it. So we have the date of vote, date of commencement. Um, what do we know what that date is? Still? Election day is November 8th. Thank you for catching that. I did have it right in some places. And I have the commencement of operations July 1, 2023. So the first year of operations would be FY24. Which means no changes for kids until 24, 20. Well, capitalize on all the opportunities that we can, but nothing that's not low fruit until 2025 at the earliest. That seems like soon, and it seems like a long time all at once. Yeah, I was going to say, just thinking of the, the financial pieces too, that you got to yeah. change over. And well, you still have an elected group of people with this 11 8 election that then starts Works convening and coming up with. Yeah, they'll start in December that, or January. As soon as you can have an organizational meeting. You kind of run parallel for that first year. We did before. Right. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna keep us moving. I think we're everybody good with that conversation. All right. Uh, so community engagement point. Full spec selection of a name. Um, yeah. Are we now done with the articles? Yeah. Our our. Preliminary articles. We are we're like that was it. That was like not our paper. We have to do a report, no, no, I understand, but, but yeah. we've like yeah. we, that was our last big crime. We should you're right. We should recognize yeah. that. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, I could use a moment before yeah. we transition. I need probably take a five minute break. Right. And I need you to enable sharing. And what I'll do is I have a PowerPoint and I will share it with all of you so you can view it on your computers or by Zoom. And we'll move on to community engagement. Okay. Um, to help you uh, with options for community engagement, I have prepared a uh, slides presentation that you can access uh, by joining the Zoom or I sent, uh, I shared it with you all via email for those of you who have a device in front of you. Come on with me. Um, the idea is that, um, this could be what I would call a roadshow where uh, teams of committee members could go out and engage with stakeholder groups that you identify to give them an overview of the articles of agreement and get their feedback. And I would encourage you to consider the stakeholder groups that you've talked about previously, both of the school boards, students, <laughs> faculty groups, and of course, um, you probably have a way better handle on community stakeholder groups and strategies for engaging them. Um, you could also use time if we're ready at the May 17th meeting um, to, to do an overview of the articles and get feedback as well and kind of advertise it as something where you want people to come, come and do a sort of, almost a legis you know, an overview and then a legislative hearing where you listen to people's feedback. Um, you also could think about the strategies for uh, gathering that feedback, whether it's just listen and take notes with your various stakeholder groups or whether you wanted to do some sort of survey and if you did that, how you'd wanna structure that. So that's my thinking. Um, and I'll just touch on, I'll, I'll leave it at that. So, you know, I haven't done any background yet. Um, so 
so it just starts with an intro. Um, the first slide is a review of the committee charge because there's been a lot of discussion about that. This is just a restatement of the charge that was adopted at the joint meeting on April 26th of 2021. And I made a note at the bottom um, that even though the full charge speaks to town meeting 2022, you guys changed that to election day. No, that should say November 8th I'll fix that, of 2022. So starts with a review of the charge an image of the folks, a slide with everybody who's on the committee. We may need to update that. Um, a slide that's a review of the process. I did, um, not including tonight's meeting, you have had 16 meetings and a community forum and spent over 34 hours together on this, in case you're interested. Um, and, um, so I listed a bullet bullets of things that you have completed from learning about the context through articles of agreement and summarize the things that are coming next that you will revise and refine the articles with your community stakeholder input. You will make a decision to recommend or not a vote on whether to form a unified union and if yes, it goes to the State Board of Ed and a possible vote on November 8th, which I will fix there as well. Um, the values and considerations that the committee has been using to, to inform thinking. This is a list from of the big ideas from your values work early on. For those of you that are not uh, looking on it in the shared um, version, I added some notes of others other values that emerged in the process. So I don't know what you'd want to include or what you'd want to talk about, but um, these are the big ones. And then I added some more in notes that could be for discussion. Um, for those of you who you know, um, wanted to be clear about the vision for the future, this was my attempt at capturing your discussion from uh, several meetings ago right after you reviewed the Nate Levinson report. This may not say what you want it to say, but it's a, an attempt to get you started around what your, what your working hypo, my working hypothesis, your working hypothesis about um, your vision for the future. And, and again, um, subject to revision or deletion altogether, but again, a potential um, nugget for communicating in the road show. And then um, an introduction to the articles of agreement explaining that they're like a contract or a charter, that they can be changed with voter approval in the future, they have to comply with the law and most of them are required and we can add optional ones. And I would imagine that you would you would either share a link to the articles of agreement and or have hard copies for people because there's no you know putting all that wording on a on a presentation is not productive. So the next set of slides is really um, a summary in simple terms of what I think you intended with each article and the rationale behind them. So articles one through four, I lump together and basically have three bullets that explain what those are about, that they're merging ANWSD and MAUSD. And at, right now they highlight that Lincoln is in the middle of that process. And these will need, that will need to be revised, that the new district will continue to operate schools pre-K-12 and no new school buildings and major renovations are necessary. I think I put a few things in, in the notes about, you know, this is, re they're required to be there. And um, the significance of what it means to operate schools pre-K-12 in case there's questions about that. Uh, a brief summary of article five, the plan for the first year of operations, which speaks to transportation assignment of staff and curriculum in more in simpler terms. I move 14D out of order 
which was the school of attendance because that also related to the fir first year of operation. Um, so that those are talking points around that. Articles 6A through C, speaking to surpluses, debt, special funds and property, everything's transferred to the new union. They need to be used for their original purposes. Disposal of real estate, um, a brief summary of the provisions for that. Return to the town for a dollar and must be for community public use. The UES, we follow the 1989 agreement and MAUS and HS and VUHS we would sell. Not that you're going to close, dispose of those properties at all, but um, that's the brief summary. Uh, 14B, I can now put some talking points in there about sustaining and protecting community schools. And uh, articles nine and 10, summarized on the next slide, board of directors and their initial terms of office. Um, that has all the key ideas from that. And then other articles are all on one slide. Article eight, they continue to operate until the new one begins. The new one begins at a certain date. Votes are by Australian ballot. 14B tells the state board that we want the efficiencies and benefits of a unified union, not a supervisory union. And 14E requires the new board to consider strategies for community involvement. And then um, with your input and guidance, we can think about strategies for feedback. I imagine that the areas that you will want to get focused feedback have to do with board representation, supporting and protecting your community schools, that first year of operations, um, community involvement. You also may want to, if that working hypothesis of your vision goals is something you want to put out there, that's something you might want to get feedback on. And if you're ready, this would be a great chance to get some input on a name. You could ask about hopes and worries as well or not, because they probably would emerge if you got focused feedback on those other items. You know, it just might streamline it to take that out. And um, information about next steps to reiterate again, we said it at the beginning, but I find some things are worth saying more than once. Um, the committee will continue its work to revise the articles. We'll have a legal review of the articles. You'll review pros and cons and make a recommendation. You also have to write a report that goes around it, but um, that's not necessary for this slide. If it's recommended, it goes to the state board and the ANWSD and MAUSD boards. That's required to give them a copy of the report. But again, you've talked about getting their input prior to finalizing the articles. That's not required, but I think it's a really wise thing to do. And I'm, I'm glad you're considering that. The vote of the electorate and if approved, I started to, you can decide whether you want this there or not. The year okay. one focus. Go on. Sorry. That's a good girl. Okay. Focused on right. um, okay. Go on. business Go. operations and governance. And then year two, continuing planning and shifting that focus to educational opportunities. That might not be the right wording, but trying to get to the idea that you were just discussing of, you know, capitalize on the low fruit, but people shouldn't expect major uh, disruptions to what they're expecting educationally until FY25 at the earliest. And I wouldn't even, disruptions isn't the right word, but enhancements, <laughs> maximization <laughs> until FY25. Yeah, so that's uh, a possible presentation. Um, so next steps, um, just so we can confirm the um, 
groups that stakeholder groups can people will talk about who we want to make sure we get out to. So I have a I have a oh, go ahead. question about that as a faculty member, not in this district, but on a faculty. I feel like we should <coughs> present it to the faculty. It shouldn't be the principal, it shouldn't be Patrick, it should be some semblance of this group. That is what's happening. Okay. I just want to make sure because communication gets really slippery yeah that would be my recommendation okay so faculty staff you get that down um and then uh both boards if you can get on your agenda Who? both Who boards oh. students can and ask for a, a special meeting I'm assuming the boards want to hear this information. Yeah, I don't think it necessarily needs to be a special meeting, right? I, how do they want to do it? You were thinking about whether there's a, a value out of a joint meeting. Mm -hmm. All of the same conversation with the same mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. the same questions. Mm -hmm. Are you got joint meeting sound good? Yes. Yeah. 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 Let's do that. Can you make that happen, Patrick? Pizza? I can talk to yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Everyone from Virginia will go. I think it's interesting that the board's created us, but we do not obtain board approval. Consent, yeah. We go straight to the DOE. Yeah. And I don't it's think everybody statute. understands that. That's in statute. I mm -hmm. think chapter 11, the remite, rewrite might change that, but current law just really empowers this body to do its work. Oh, so could we? Could our work be affected by chapter one? No. Okay. Well, yes and no. Well, we've been trying. I've been trying to make sure you're aligned. The big area that um, that that are that I want to make sure we're considering is the Lincoln, the Lincoln piece, and now perhaps Darksboro. Um, but I'm well, let's keeping just, an eye on you. Let's do the list, and then we we'll talk about how we'll reach out to them. So uh, students um, okay. and then community groups. Do we want to talk about what community groups and yeah. when we're talking to students? Do we want to talk to parents as well? Well, that's community groups, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the parents as a, as a, as a, as a community group. <laughs> yeah, right. So, right, for sure. So, community groups, one would be parents. What other community groups? Well, senior citizens, <laughs> even though they often get, I'm serious, I mean, mm -hmm. they are, I can go over to the senior center and. What? The most, yes, we pay taxes. But <laughs> we pay taxes. Uh, They're very we, interested. Do we want to reach out to boards? Select boards or the different towns. Yep. Fire department, rescue squad. <laughs> well, to be serious about that, like when my father in law was getting this building, like the renovations done for this, he went to like the Lions Club, the Rotary Club, and, you know, the Regents Partnership, civic groups, all those civic groups, and like presented these, like a, um, like a presentation like this to all of them to get that message out to the community. And I think that made a huge difference in getting the renovations done on this building 20 years ago. And so that push of getting the whole community on board. Right, the business members. Right, yeah. could get the message out much so, quicker. So but, civic groups, who are the civic groups? You know, we've got the Legion in. The, in Virgins? In uh, we've community. got the Masons, the Legion, the Eagles. <laughs> Partnership would be considered a civic group and then yeah, the rotary, rotary. Yeah. I think businesses too. Well, the like, rotary would be connected to the business. Right. Yeah. The Virginia partnership. Yeah. Right. Partnership. You hit those two. Yeah, the Bristol core. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And then also the fire department, the well, just well, tell a boovier and that should take care yeah. of the <laughs> fire department, right? So just remembering going through the, right, right. the bond process um, and how frustrating it was to have events and nobody came. Yeah. Um, I, I think we have to go to them. Right. I think, I think we have to go to them. And I think, and I, I do, and I think it'd be nice to like figure out how to coordinate two or three at a time, but have enough people so it's a conversation, mm -hmm. not a big presentation. Mm -hmm. So that it, you sort of present the thing and then we talk about it. And it's okay. not 300 people in the room being talked at. I think the right. more small conversations we can have, even if we just split the two, and three, but, but that's going to be the way. Mm -hmm. If, if we can get 300 people in a room, that would be good. <laughs> so I think this is really important okay. for the stakeholder groups, but I, I kind of feel like we need a completely separate presentation with all of the background information, um, the state of our demographics I mean, and our changing, that. you know, ah. the changing uh, populations uh, to make people understand why this is so important. Like I know in rare gens, there's a lot of people who still think Mount Abe is falling down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, also think I need a tour of the school. Your <laughs> I do. You're so much in debt and we're yeah. just gonna take on your debt. Yeah. And like, I, I feel know. like the basics of the yeah. you know, that we've went through, <laughs> general community does not know or understand. And mm. just this mm. is maybe too high level for a lot of them. Yeah. So you need a why and some background information yeah, and a, a more yeah. simple presentation. Like in my in my work, when we do anything public facing, it has to be written to a sixth grade level, yeah. just to ensure mm -hmm. that what our points are getting across. Uh, Stephanie, um, Patrick, can you allow Stephanie to speak? She should be able to. Can you hear me? We just can't hear her. We need the mic on. Oh, and go ahead. Sorry. Can you hear me now? <laughs> um, I just, I, I wanted to um, point out or bring up um, the idea. I wonder if it would be beneficial to make a video that went out to all 10 uh, town citizens um, with, with kind of the basic points so that everybody's getting the same message. Uh, it's just an idea. Thank you. Sorry, just for my own clarification again, we are not, we were just talking about this. So like, we are gonna make a recommendation after all the community input. So at this point, we are presenting all of the information and all of the work we've done to this point and why we've drafted these articles. At some point, if our recommendation is to that we think this merger should happen, that that's what we're we're putting this out there. Is somebody trying to sell it? Like, are we trying to sell a merger, or are we just trying to say we believe it's in the best interest of the communities? Do what you will. Yes, both both count. I'm not sure by law you can sell it. Right. You can present so information. You can't sort of really push for a yes. Right. You can't so tell them how to be a lot of choose. Yeah. Okay. So I guess there's some nuance way. I think it's really important to like paint the picture of the reality. Like, yeah, no, um, you know, you we're at the point in the school year right now in all of these schools where all the kids have signed up for their classes. You know, even at our school, mm -hmm. right? And the yeah, teachers are going to start really looking at how many sections of 10th grade biology and how many sections of Spanish three. And like, you're going to, we're getting the numbers in both of the schools. And, and it's very different at the high school level than just saying there's 38 kids in the third grade class. Like if there's four kids in calculus one, taxpayers, in the community should know that. Like that's just, that's information that might help them understand where we're at. And, and I don't know how, I don't know how and what we can do, but I think it's important that we show there's nothing behind the curtain. Like this is where we are. 
the numbers are really low in a lot of places for a lot of reasons. And the savings only come from human beings. I am the savings. He is the savings. It doesn't come from paper, pencils, and bus trips. So I just, I just, that's not promoting one way or another to vote. That's just the reality is yeah. that the next steps. All that we had to go through. To, yeah, to the, get, the next yeah. steps are going to be students are coming out and classes are gone in some of these towns and in some of these places. And just so you know, that's why, like you said, that's why we're here. And that's why we're doing this work is to try and figure out how to. Yeah. So that why piece, yeah. And you can vote how you want, but this is what we've learned and this is what we've put together. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like, I think we just need to figure out how to have some of that information. Mm -hmm. Like a graph some, or? Some, like some just real, real numbers. Yep. That people can see, like you said, like that they really understand. When they say we're getting small, well, what does that mean? It means that eight years ago or 10 years ago, we had this number of kids in these classes. And now we have this. And we're still paying X number of teachers because we have to have them or whatever, but like. Well, I think the amount of classes needs to show that, like beyond people that we are cutting, like, in 2008, you could go up to calculus four. You could take seven different kinds of theater class, and now there's one. Yeah, so opportunities are just yeah. restricted. Yeah. Erica, um, I do have one question <clears throat> in terms of um, the message that you know the savings is crucial because I feel like before we talked about how the savings is people, but the immediate effect is not going to be a bunch of peace slips handed out mm -hmm. when we announce the merger. So I think we need to be careful that we we understand the savings is in personnel, or we will lose them regardless to of the merger or not. But it is a managed process mm -hmm. of attrition yeah. rather than you know mass layoffs if we merge because I don't I yeah. want to be careful that we're not letting that message get out accidentally. And the shared attrition across all the schools we'll is so much easier than waiting in one building for some attrition. Like that is what allows you the, the power is the mobility of a larger unit mm -hmm. right. that gives the capacity, that is the power uh, to to facilitate all of those moves to not have to hand out pink slips, to let people retire and let people and then figure out who and what and how to replace. I think, I think we can simply say the attrition is coming regardless. This allows us to not lose opportunity programming in the process. Opportunity okay, programming in the process. So how do we want to approach it? Um, we do so for the uh, school boards. How do we want to do that? Um, joint meeting, have Patrick. And then um, how do we want to present that thought? Do we want to have groups of people? Do we want to have, how do we want to do that? Can I just clarify? So it sounds like there's interest in me reaching out to the board chairs and we'll bring Sheila in to say, are you in agreement that we can try to find a joint meeting time for this presentation? And as one of several potential events or as yeah i mean i mean all this community engagement is us right so and we were going to how are we going to do that how, what makes the most sense i do really like Spencer's idea of community yeah You just can't respond to it. Right. You can't yeah, have a conversation. As far as getting information out, it's, we want to make sure they're informed by public. So we're looking for feedback, is the main. We're, true, we're yeah. looking for community input. So. But I, I, I think we've got to do both, though. Like, yeah. People should get better input once they've. Get information. Get then they might come to a meeting and they might come to a understand the. Um, you know what's what's really coming and what the situation is and why we've done this work and 
It would just be a voiceover of this of, of this slideshow that once it's more finished and then it's, so it's someone's voice that we're not having to do that part and then we're collecting the feedback after that. At the end of the video, we could have something about, you know, please, you know, we could Scare them to some place to um, for feedback. We could have a thought exchange um, and share them to the thought exchange with feedback or something like that. I was like imagining that I'm going to some group. Maybe it's online, and I'm saying they're all coming to hang out with me from 7:30 to 7 to 8:15, and I'm going to press play on the video so that the message is consistent that we're releasing initially and then i'm gonna we have maybe some either quite we ask for their feedback on some of these points mm -hmm. and we collect that right yeah. then and there so we're not each presenting the presentation is the video yeah. so it's consistent mm -hmm. and the no, same you don't like this, oh no i'm saying it can't be me that does the video <laughs> <laughs> it needs to be you guys somebody some of you that do the video that do the voiceover on mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Yeah, it doesn't need to be your face. It can be the. Yeah. Some well, of not, us do it a lot. Not my face, not my face. And I'm also assuming that if we do this joint board meeting, though all the board meetings are televised anyway on the yeah. TV, and you have something over here that does mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So that can be televised, and anybody could tune in, mm -hmm. and then they also could hear the questions the board members are asking. Like that would be a. Mm -hmm valuable like sell that to like hey everybody tune in yeah, that yeah. Would be. i uh, think would be archived, so we don't have to even tune in. yeah like yeah. here go see the board receive information from the committee heavy advertising and it might be a letter that goes to all select boards saying here or here are the two or three opportunities for you to chime in kind of thing i like what we did previously with uh Circle discussions with you know pre selected prompts, break up, gather the feedback, like follow up all the you know, the sort of advertising and getting information we get out, you know, front porch forums, Facebook, school newsletter, maybe a little call, like invite them, then invite like, people to register for an event where they come and have those circle discussions. Posters. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, yeah. That would be helpful. Does the voice need to be people to that are not someone who will do the voice? <laughs> what a uh, good, Mary, clear Mary? voice. Yeah. I just do it a lot. So I'm not opposed to be, being one of the voices on there, but I might be a voice that some people don't want to hear. So I want to make sure. <laughs> that, like, it um, needs to be someone that's okay. well respected. So I'm and, gonna, I would I would like. happily participate in that, but I I'm not sure I'm the right person. I just might have I'm well practiced. It's the only thing I'm gonna say is that I'm that willing I'm to revise. It's 8 30. Yeah. I'm willing to revise the presentation and add, try and simplify the language. That's not my strong point. So um don't ask. Me. So Glory's gonna help me. Um thank you. And I'll add a sl slide around the context and the why. And if there are a couple of people between, you know, if, if Gloria and I do that in the next couple of days, if there is one or two people that are willing to record. You could try to have like four people or something. Yeah, break it up a little break more. It up. Would you be willing to coordinate that? If if I get the presentation to you in the next couple of days, would you be willing to coordinate that with other committee volunteers? So Who are the other committee yeah. volunteers? Raise your hand. Would be excellent. <laughs> <laughs> you guys could do it in the teachers' room. <laughs> I'm wondering, do we want to have a like, hire someone to do the, the real work and yes. make it all? Oh. Griffin Parity is home from his first year at RIT and he is in media and I can make him do it for free. 
I actually make videos um, a lot yes, um, yes. as part of my job, so I'm I'm perfectly willing to. All right, Sarah, well. do you, are you good? You and Troy, or do you need no, more? No, we need you from both sides. Yeah, uh, yeah. we, we, we so need we need for Jen. Erica. Uh, oh, I have to. No. Oh, she yeah. says no. Okay. Okay. I will, oh, yeah, her hand is up. All right, you got it. Hands up. Hands up. Hands up. You're unmuted, I think. Well, unmute your Sarah. Uh, <laughs> All right, I think you should be good now. Yes, yes. Something. I'm going to turn. I'm I was just saying, nobody has their mic on, so it's been quiet since Ms. Rossier spoke. So I was just, if somebody could turn the mic on. Um, thank you. Um, All right, now my mic on. Oops. All right, on. sorry. Uh, so working on a video thought exchange and in-person opportunities. <laughs> between May 17th and June 6th. Stay tuned for more info. Yeah. Um, all right, any public comment? I don't see any. Um, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Ed raised his hand first. So moved. I don't think we need a second. You're in favor, go home. <laughs>